Good afternoon and welcome to night three of Cliffy Lamb's Global Cooking Challenge. Cooking the food of South Africa tonight. The third of three nights. Uh, tonight uh, we are uh, doing something uh, kind of interesting. It's actually called Durban Bunny Chow. So uh, check that out. Um, once again, to point out the obvious, South Africa is located in South Africa, right there. Uh, Durban is uh, located on the east coast of Africa, and that is where this dish originates. Uh, so let's check that out. Uh, thank you for the uh, restream there, Adrian and uh, Derek and the like. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Uh, let me get my lens ready here, which I should have done earlier. As we listen to Lady Smith Black Mamba. Uh, one moment. Okay, here we go. Flipping around. Nice. There I am. Uh, hey, uh, Hector. Yes, hey there. Good seeing you. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, already. Lens on. Door one. Okay. They look the same on both sides. There we go. Okay. So, this is going to be interesting. Um, uh, thank you, Larry, for the uh, restream there. And, and the like, rather. Uh, and uh, let's get us hooked up here. So, we can see that. That was a bad thing. Okay. Uh, we'll fix it. We can fix it. We have the power. Okay. Let's hope this is the right one. Hold that thought. Sorry about that. Look at the sky for a moment. Hi, this is what I look like from above. That's a really great way to start things. How's everybody doing? South Africa, very cool. Yes, um, this is the third night we're doing South Africa. And uh, it, uh, it's been sort of a challenge finding stuff to do for a variety of reasons, which I discussed before, we'll discuss now, and let's see if that can fix on this time. Okay. Uh, that's what my ceiling looks like. Alrighty. Now don't Remember my vertical pills, indeed. No, that's not the fish eye. That looks like the fish eye. Let me just double check. Sorry about that, people. Technical difficulties. That's the fish eye. Okay. They really, I should mark them. Okay. One more time. Stay. Don't fall. Okay. Hey, Bobby. Long time to see. How you been? Thank you for the uh, restream. So, once more, we are cooking Durban Bunny Chow. Uh, does not involve bunnies. And I, in fact, I don't know why they call it Durban Bunny Chow. Uh, but the magic of this dish comes at the very, very end. So if you, you know, if you just, if you're watching this in the future on YouTube and you get bored, just skip to the end because that's where the surprise comes in. <clears throat> but we're holding off on the surprise. Uh, other than that, you're going to find it very similar to um, an Indian curry because that's kind of what we got. So we're going to get a bowl and start adding some spices here. So we're gonna start with the star anise, which I have not used in a while, so I have to remember where I've hidden it. Uh, we're gonna use you in a second. And uh, you too while we're at it. Uh, star anise, I know I bought it, here we go. Okay. So, a little cockeyed. How's everybody doing? Okay. So, uh, I need my measuring spoons and my camera. Alrighty. Now, okay. After all that drama, I will add one star anise. Yep. That's these suckers right here. Uh, when I first went to get star anise, um, or anise. Um, months ago, for something else, they directed me to the plant, which was something else. So, star anise. One cinnamon stick. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. 
just dawned upon me that doesn't say anything about grinding these things at the end. Strikes me as odd. I'm gonna check this recipe again. Because, uh, that just struck me as odd. Oh, uh, three cardamom pods. Uh, give me a second here. I just need to be 100% sure. This particular recipe, uh, is from the website I'm not really crazy about called food, the food.com. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. Doesn't say anything about grinding these, which is really strange. Okay, so going with three whole cardamom pods. Do 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 right there. Hey, I'm starting to make uh, some progress on my green cardamom pods. Maybe someday uh, by the year 2020, I'll be done with them. And they'll taste like nothing. I bought a star anise a year ago and I still haven't used any. Huh. Yeah, this may be the second time. The third time it's been called for, the second time I've used it. Because like I said, um, somebody directed me to the wrong thing when I asked about it before. Um, uh, fennel. So we're, uh, let me put these back and I got my fennel out already. <clears throat> uh, and I have this stuff alphabetized, if you can believe it. The, uh, OCD comes in handy sometimes. Okay. Uh, fennel. Fennel, fennel, fennel. I told you my fennel joke. Uh, one half teaspoon fennel. Joke from the Bob Newhart show. Where he's, Bob sends Emily, uh, Emily sends Bob out to buy fennel and he says, what's fennel? He goes, I don't know, it's in the spice rack. It comes between one thing and another. This is what do you do with it? I don't know, you make fennel cakes. So, um, fennel. Um, I think those three spices impart great flavor without grinding. Thanks, uh, thanks Hector. Thanks for that tip. Hey Danny, thanks uh, for the uh, restream there. Uh, so we've got our fennel, and now we're going to add half a teaspoon of cumin seed. Yeah, I'm just worried about, you know, at the end, the, um, you're not, you know, having these things, having to fish them out of the dish before serving, because it didn't say anything about that, which it probably should, because I don't want to bite into this sucker. Um, whoa, that's a smell. Uh, okay, so half a teaspoon of cumin seed. Hey, oh, Danny, hi there. Um, yeah, I wasn't on anyone's streams this morning. I wasn't feeling too well. But I did do my 10 miles, so. If I felt good enough for that, I'd feel good enough for this. And I'm, I'm not taking pictures of each individual piece of this. Uh, but we're adding the cumin, half a teaspoon of cumin seed. So, star anise, cinnamon stick, cardamom pods, fennel, and cumin seeds. Um, Eduardo, hello, thank you for the restream. Uh, before I forget, let me make sure I get you some power before you die. Alrighty, so I'm gonna put this aside. Put these away. Be right back. Don't go away. Uh, cumin, under C. Star, anise, uh, under S. Uh, and fennel, under F. For Pete's sake. Really? They're doing Billy Joel. Lady, Lady Smith, Lady Smith Black Mombasa does Billy Joel. Okay. That's something. So we have one onion. And so we're going to peel and chop that. Uh, I bought me an extra onion just in case. Because you never know with onions. There's always going to be a moment that, oh crap, I need another onion. And I mean, I've given up buying the, the big bags of onions because, I don't know. It is this kind of a grab bag. You never know what you're going to get quality-wise. Which kind of sucks because you know, there's only some grocery stores I have here that you have a choice of getting individual uh, ones of a certain types of onions or whatever, or potatoes. That's the big one for me. Like, you can't get, you know, just a couple potatoes unless they're like big giant you know russet baking potatoes which is not what I'm usually looking for um, so that okay so onion onion la 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 uh, okay so the deal with this dish is that it is um, basically an Indian dish um, 
uh, hence uh, it being a Durban on the Indian Ocean. Um, it's enjoyed by all South Africans. Um, however, it's the serving uh, that makes it special. Um, because uh, actually what goes inside this part that we're doing right now um, could be any number of curry dishes. Um, from a chicken tikka masala to, you know, you name it. Um, uh, this is the one that uh, I happen to get, which is uh, we're doing a lamb, uh, a lamb dish that's going to be served this special, special way. The first time I heard of this dish was, uh, I, meant, I keep mentioning him all the time, my global traveling friend, the one who got the Guinness World Record for going to every country in the world without flying. Um, I, I read all 80 million words of his blog, four years worth, and when he was in South Africa and he was in Durban, he you know, made a point of mentioning this insane dish and how cool it was. And I said, wow, when I get to do in South Africa, I have to do that dish. And I found myself looking for all sorts of different dishes, thinking I probably wouldn't do this um, uh, for a couple reasons. And uh, But one of them was I wanted to do something that was, you know, I mean, I'm doing three nights. I want to do something that reflected the, uh, the indigenous population and such. <clears throat> and that proved more difficult than um, I thought it would be because... Uh, it either was very much like other dishes that I've done for other sort of neighboring nations, because we've already done Lesotho and Botswana and Namibia and, uh, and Mozambique and Kenya and so forth. So um, there's a lot of overlap on that front. Or it involves produce or proteins that I just can't find. Um, so either certain greens, like there was a sorrel soup. Um, I don't know if it's pronounced sorrel or sorrel. Um, I had bought sorrel or sorrel um, uh, for something months and months and months ago. Um, I wound up buying it pickled in a jar, and uh, I had totally forgotten that it happened, um, that I had used it. Uh, but the husband pointed out that we had it sitting in the in the fridge for months, and we finally threw it out. Um, so that's uh, how much I remember it. In any case, uh, I didn't think I'd be able to find fresh. Um, and besides, that was a soup. Then other stuff all involved, um, you know, offal of some sort. You know, lamb liver, tongue, you know, chicken head and feet, um, all, you know, all sorts of things like that that, I mean, not only is it hard to find and getting over the, you know, the fear of eating things that are really odd um, to Western palates. Um, but finding it would be difficult, and to make awful taste good, you need to cook it usually very, very long time, or pickle it, or something like that, and uh, I generally don't have that. Sorrel. Sorrel. Thank you, Sorrel. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, and I really didn't feel like making the grand trip down to the uh, global market, which is not close. Um, on on what could have been a wild goose chase. Like African stuff tends to be the trickiest stuff to find around here, um, even at that market, um, which kind of stinks, because they have you know I mean, they have a giant they have a Bangladeshi food aisle that's from goes from here to Kingdom Come, which is surprising, because um, I didn't know there were a whole lot of Bangladeshis around here, um, but. Uh, but the African food aisle is, you know, smaller than this kitchen. Your nice girls are progressing well. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate that. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, I spend uh, some time, again, you know, obsessing on what next. Uh, since, you know, uh, July 27th is the last day of Zimbabwe. Um, I did spend time talking to the cousins. But, uh, discussing them, you know, coming from Puerto Rico and uh, doing like a whole night of Puerto Rico as the big, you know, send-off of, um, hey, Lydia, thank you for the restream. Um, but the big send-off for the uh, the Global Cooking Challenge 1.0. Take a vacation and uh, do the um, conflict nations. 
Yeah. And uh, selected ones, anyway. And then um, hit up uh, 2.0, maybe. Who knows? Maybe I'll start over again. Because y'all didn't see, um, you know, A through O. So uh, we'll see how much better I've gotten since, you know, the first time. And everyone can get to see that great stew from Afghanistan that started it all. So that should be interesting. So we have our chopped onion right there. Uh, Serena, hey, thanks for liking the restream. Okay, chopped onion, abracadabra. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, garlic cloves. Let me clean this off because that's going to drive me nuts. Hey, thank you for the follow, Serena. Thank you very much. So, uh, as a... Uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I gotta keep talking, otherwise the copyright gods will find me on YouTube and they will block, 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 block. So we have to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Okay. That's the thing, I'm on, um, I'm posting these things on YouTube now. And if I don't stop talking, if I stop talking, then suddenly it's like, you're using copyrighted music, we can't let you. So, if you see me being manic like that, in addition to being my personality, that's a reason. Okay, uh, four garlic cloves. I am spied that I see. In uh, case you didn't already know, and you, pro and, you know, you likely do, South Africa has one, is one of the world's most complicated countries, uh, historically speaking. Um, uh, in terms of, you know, the last few hundred years, uh, in the native population, you know, was there, and then the Dutch showed up around Cape, the Cape of Good Hope, and decided to establish that as a trading post, uh, or as a stopping way station on the way from the Netherlands back to, um, Southeast Asia and Indonesia. Uh, where they would trade spices and such, and that uh, they brought in slave labor from uh, Southeast Asia, which is where our, uh, our what was it, Friday's dish came from, which was uh, the one South African dish which is considered like the most South African, uniquely South African of all, which is called baboti, which is sort of like a meat casserole, uh, with spices and such, and a curried egg, I mean, um, an egg custard on top, which wound up tasting super, super delicious, and we just finished it off just, um, yesterday, I think. Um, the other, um, uh, but that was where the origin of that dish. Uh, yeah, uh, today is Tuesday. Sunday's dish, uh, was a, um, unusual one from the west coast of Africa, uh, which was uh, crayfish and pasta, which was um, a, uh, uh, so we did lobster. So lobster and, and spaghetti, basically, in uh, cream cheese sauce. I'm gonna turn that down. Hold that thought. Don't need some heat. Okay. Meanwhile, you're a fantastic host. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are a very nice person for saying that, Tachi. Um, so, um, anyway, so the Dutch, you know, had their colony there, and then the British came along, and uh, they decided, you know, they wanted to take the, the place over, and the Dutch kind of moved inland. And as they moved inland, um, they uh, kind of weren't, they renamed themselves the Afrikaners. And uh, they fought a couple wars with the British, uh, the Boer Wars, and then they lost. And then the uh, system of apartheid came in in the 20th century uh, with the strict separation of races and so forth. And that uh, eventually uh, ended after a lot of international boycotting and activity and such and activism much, much uh, on the part of the South Africans, Nelson Mandela, um, 1991. Uh, the, uh, er, by the mid nineties, they, you know, we know that the apartheid was ended and they, 
instituted a multiracial democracy, and um, they, uh, until recently, were the number one uh, biggest economy on the entire African continent. Um, they uh, recently um, surpassed by Nigeria. Uh, and that, you know, it's slightly controversial because it's kind of like, how, how do you count that? Um, so uh, that's like the two second history tour of the very large and complex nation of South Africa. Um, like I said, I really wish I could have done other stuff. I mentioned that there was um, a dish. I don't know if you were with us on Sunday. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, go back. Uh, if you go back to the start, you can include Caledonia, which is Roman Latin name for Scotland, defined as a land north of Britannia. Uh-huh. Uh, Zulzman, thank you for the like and the restream. Oh, Des Jurgen. Yes, Jurgen. I have to remember your, your handle there. Um, so, yeah. So it's, like I said, complicated place. Um, it's kind of a shame that uh, my two friends that, uh, you know, either are South African or lived for a time in South Africa never got back to me with their favorite dishes, so alas. But this should be good. Like I said, ever since I read about this dish, I said, mm, I want to try that. This sounds crazy. Now, one thing about this dish that I, I we won't be doing, and this part you won't see because it after we're done, um, is this dish is meant to be eaten with the hands. We aren't doing that. Eating it with the hands sounds like it would be insanely messy. Um, and I have no idea how we're going to store leftovers, because I'm sure there's going to be plenty. But we're going to make it work. So. Doo -doo -doo. And uh, since we didn't do when we cooked India way before Meerkat, uh, we didn't get to do, you know, the bay, the chicken tikka masala and things like this that we tend to order at Mexican, uh, Mexican, for Pete's sake, Indian restaurants. Um, so this is um, going to be sort of like a lamb, in, Indian lamb dish. Uh, but you'll see as soon as I finish all this uh, prep stuff. Um, so we've got our garlic cloves so we're going to peel um, and uh, cube. Uh, two, uh, two, two, two potatoes. So let me get, clean this off real quick. Be right back. Moment for cleanliness. Okay, potatoes coming right up. Now I was talking about the onions and the potatoes that uh, I don't like buying in bags, but you know, to get to a store where I can buy individual potatoes means crossing another bridge. And here, that's just a hassle. So it can be like half an hour just to go a quarter mile because of a stupid drawbridge. Uh, okay. So, let's see. Let's hope these potatoes are... They're not, they're not old, but... Just want to make sure they're okay. Okay. Mm. They're okay, but they won't be for long. I don't want to use the big one. That might have to get thrown away. Um, that's what I hate about buying these bags. You know, unless I'm, you know, know that I'm being on a stretch of countries in Europe where it's like potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Um, they just sit. And it's all about the alphabet. Okay, so I'm gonna need a bowl of water for this. Okay, because this is where we're going to store our um, cubed potatoes. Um, I once had been invited by Nigerian refugees in Germany, had once been invited by Nigerian refugees in Germany, and had to eat with my left hand, which took me some time to feel comfortable. I know, there's that whole thing, and, you know, I know the whole right hand, left hand, eating thing, and, you know, why, and all that. I don't think I could handle that. Um, I mean, of all the countries we've done, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a ton of things that I've made that are meant to be eaten with the hands. And um, other than a sandwich, maybe one, um, have I done that. 
even though I know, like when I cooked Ethiopia and Eritrea, that's fine if I'm in a restaurant or in someone else's home, but when I'm here, the way we eat here, uh -uh. it's going to be knife and fork. Although I really should invest in chopsticks. Because more than once I've needed, it's been obvious that a certain food is meant to be eaten with chopsticks. Uh, who was it? Um, someone, some, you know, I'm just obsessed with global traveling things and people and such. There's um, someone I was following, video, um, I think it was around the world for free. Um, what the hell, I'll tell you what that is. Santo, say there, thanks, uh, sandwiches and chicken legs for me. Yes, indeed. Um, but like Ethiopian food, you know, is, you know and, and a lot of African foods are meant to be, you know, eaten communally and you grab something like a pap or a bread or injera bread or something like that and you grab the whatever with your hands and you eat it. And that's all well and good and I'll do that in a restaurant, but not, not at home. Anyway, this uh, Around the World for Free, um, this ended a few years ago. The premise was that there was this guy who was one of the first two people who won The Amazing Race and he started this series, it was exclusively online, um, that the premise was he would try to go around the world for free to, you know, without any money, just kind of on the kindness of strangers, getting from point A to point B and getting food and getting a place to stay and all this. And um, I didn't see that first season, but um, I saw little bits of it. But the second one, they had this uh, guy who won, um, who won, who was on Big Brother in the US and on The Amazing Race. And uh, they had him go around the world. And I think it was him when he was somewhere in India where they sat down and they were going through the whole business of right hand, left hand, eating, whatever. And I was like, oh my God, no. That, I don't think I could do that. I don't know, I'm, not, I'm just a big old baby. I'm just all about other cultures and everything, but when experiencing it in person, that's, that's when I start getting wobbly on that. I'm sorry. I'm just weird that way. It's part of the OCD. Uh, hey, Sicker, thank you for being a first time watcher. Thank you for making this your stop. Um, to uh, refresh for the uninitiated, this is my uh, four year project. I started in September of 2012 in order to learn to cook after not cooking for 30 years um, or ever learning to cook, I decided to uh, basically cook uh, food from a different UN member state in alphabetical order uh, a week, once a week, or now three times a week, uh, till I get around the world and then I'll know how to cook. And uh, so now this is country number 160, am I? 160, yes. Um, South Africa, um, which uh, has uh, been doing this on Meerkat since uh, week, I think it was 141, Pakistan. Um, uh, we did one week on before that on um, Periscope, and I had exactly one person watching, so uh, I decided to stick with the meerkat. So that's where we're at, and now you are sort of caught up. Uh, hey there, Elwix. Thank you for coming by. How you doing? We are uh, gonna be cubing these taters. So, uh, bit, 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 to be. Here we go. Getting a flat surface. The key is having a flat surface. One thing that I've learned so far. Other than that, the cubing part, still not so great on. Uh, not really. Getting everything the same size is a constant challenge for me. So, uh, we're gonna see how that goes, eh? Uh-huh, uh-uh, 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 uh, -huh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. cubes go in, cubes go in to the water. This keeps them from, the potatoes from oxidizing. Another little thing I've learned. Yep. Okay. And we're, thankfully, there's not too many potatoes here, so this shouldn't be too boring for too long. Yeah. 
it's still not cubed enough. You cubie, cubie, cubie. And today, I don't even know, today's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, yes. So Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, making plans for that. Uh, now people are saying, hey, can you make something? Uh, which is lovely. That they, you know, used to be that no one would ask me because, you know, I, I would kill people. They would, I said, I said, do you want to die? I'll make something if you don't mind dying. Um, but, uh, now they're like, oh, make something. Except the family friends are like, uh, oh, that's all weird stuff. What is that? I don't know. It's like, it's just a potato salad. Oh, but that's all weird. What's a sweet potato? Oh, no, that looks weird. I don't know. It's like, oh, forget it. So I'm gonna be making for a party um, uh, something that wasn't, that I did on here, but was not officially part of any country. It was just something I was doing kind of in between. I cut planks, oh, thank you, Hector. I cut planks into sticks, into cubes. Planks into sticks, into cubes seems to work for me. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, into sticks, into cubes I got. The planks part, that's where um, uh, I get lost is the planks like this is it sideways but then um so i'm guessing these are planks and then i'm getting sticks are the planks knee yeah, slipping okay and then, yes, yeah, switch, and then cubes. Well, that's logical. Let's see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, well, I got it done, and they're not all the same size, but they're not, they're nothing's overly huge, so how do you do it? How do you do what? Um, sorry, there's a little 30 second delay on Meerkat, which, um, leads to, um, some confusion when, um, pronoun references. So, um, you can explain on your it question there, and I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, Luke. Um, so, uh, okay, so we've got our potatoes in the water here, so that's gonna sit there for a little while. Um, and, 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 anything else that needs to be chopped? Anything else needs to be chopped? No, nothing else needs to be chopped. So I'm gonna clean this off and then we're just gonna, you know, get moving. Um, I'm just gonna put aside a couple other things and then I'll be ready to start cooking. This is, um, a rather fast cook, surprisingly. Um, I wasn't sure when to start. Because uh, whenever I see a recipe that says something takes X amount of time and it says prep time 15 minutes, I always say prep time equals one hour because I'm that kind of slow. Plus the fact that I set everything aside. Sorry. Plus the fact that I set everything aside um, so I can take pictures and talk, um, which slows down the process. Uh, but, you know, I'm working on figuring out when, you know, optimally to do thing X and thing Y. Oh, nuts. There is one more thing to chop, isn't there? Um, where are you? Where are you? Tomatoes. Yes. Uh, I need two tomatoes. Uh, I got two tomatoes. One of the lucky things about living in Florida. You can kind of count on kind of decent tomatoes most of the year. At least that's my understanding. I cut the, I square the planks off first, square them off, and then cut evenly for the same size cubes. Okay, and you throw away the extra stuff, I'm guessing. Um, tap on the person's input to ask a question of them. Okay. Um, so, and uh, I'm going to uh, wash these, and I'll be right back. Here are these stupid stickers. I swear, I, I read years ago that they were going to put little laser tattoos on fruit, which would be the equivalent of the stickers, and I'd never seen it happen. Alrighty. So, coring the tomatoes. Hold that thought. Um, 
Did you ever cut your fingers during the project with that huge knife? I'm always afraid when I have to use sharp tools. Good question. Um, not, well, I mean, I can't say I never have, um, but I've never, never badly. Um, I've like nicked my finger, you know, maybe once or twice. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm like the guy to talk to on knife skills because, you know, it's kind of ridiculous for me to pretend I am. Um, however, in, you know, in three plus years of doing this, uh, and getting help from nice people like y'all, and looking online, um, there's a, by the way, there's a website that I love, I can't stop raving about it, called The Tasting Table, which you can find online, you can find it on Facebook, um, that, uh, are always have wonderful tips, recipes, um, articles, there's, there isn't a day they don't post something that I find interesting. I wish I had like the time to cook all the stuff that they post too. Um, in any case, I also took um, a one day, mostly worthless uh, course at the culinary school here on basic knife skills, which is what I wanted to know. Um, and uh, they did give me a couple tips that you know managed to help, but it wasn't worth the whole day of wasting a lot of time. Um, sadly, there's a little waste involved when I cube. There is, there is a little waste involved when I cube. See, yeah, that's kind of what I imagined um, when I was doing the um, fries for Russia, for the beef stroganoff, which is truly one of the best dishes that um, I've made on this entire journey. If you haven't seen it, you can see it online. Everything is at cliffyland.com. Uh, just go to .com right there. And, uh, and check that out, because... Um, that was, you know, I know beef stroganoff is like, uh, beef stroganoff. I had that in cafeteria growing up. No, this was good stuff. But uh, those were served on um, french fries, uh, you know, pommes frites. And I did them in the Belgian style that I did way back when I cooked Belgium. And they were extraordinary. And there was indeed a lot of waste because I needed them perfect matchsticks. And I followed these careful instructions. And yes, it involved waste, but it was so good. And there were big potatoes, so I didn't feel too bad about that. Um, boy, that was so good. And that was one night I actually had guests, which has only happened three times. Only three times have I ever cooked for um, anyone other than the husband. Um, so uh, I should be using this one, I think. Uh, now, you know, it used to be I would just, you know, go willy-nilly on the tomatoes, but now I've gotten, after watching uh, Victor on the Swedish food TV thing, I saw him coring tomatoes, and I was thinking, oh, that looks, that it tastes so much better, and, and I looked online, and I found, you know, ways to, um, to do that, and, uh, so I think I'm sort of doing it the way I'm supposed to do it, uh, because it does wind up tasting better. Um, but, uh, as, you know, when I started this whole thing after not cooking for 30 years, um, you know, I had the whole, I had this whole Top Chef blog, the gag being that I had a Top Chef blog and I didn't know how to cook, uh, which is what set me apart from the other bloggers. I was trying to be funny. Um, but I got to know the people, some people associated with, you know, who were on the show and such. And, uh, and so through one of them, the big super chef guy, I was sort of complaining to him, going, I don't know how to cook. And he says, oh, just go online and learn how to roast a, uh, uh, a chicken. You know, you do that, get started. Deal with it, and you'll be fine. And I went, what? He said, just go on YouTube. Go on YouTube, find a recipe for a roast chicken, and just do it. So, you know, but this is before I did Afghanistan. I like, I, so I bought a whole chicken, and I cried. I was like, how do I do this? How do I do this? I don't understand. Where's the wishbone? I still don't know where to find the wishbone. On a chicken, I'm still I'm still a little afraid to cook a whole chicken, but uh, but I'm getting better at it. Ah, come back, come back, little Sheba. Okay. So, uh, yes, but I'm making uh, for the Thanksgiving party thing. I'm gonna be making something accessible. Um, it was a uh, basically cornbread, but not just cornbread. It was a basil, 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 basil cornbread, and you'll recall that I have pronunciation issues with that basil 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 it was a fresh basil cornbread which was 
like smack your mama good. It was so good. Let me mention that I love your blog. I got stuck on one whole afternoon. You're writing so enjoyably. Thank you for that. That is so nice. That you are so very kind. Thank you so very much. I very much appreciate that. Um, yes. Th again, the blog is at cliffyland.com. Um, you can go there. You can see, um, you know, the entire journey from well before Meerkat, from back when I couldn't boil water. Um, and I'd like have to look up when every instruction. It's like when it says saute, what does that mean? When it says medium heat, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm going crazy. You know that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I'm glad there was nobody watching me then. Um, but anyway, it's all up there, and we're on. Um, you can follow on Twitter at Cliffy Land, right there. Um, on Facebook, on Tumblr, that's where the blog is. On um, Pinterest and on Instagram, and now on YouTube. So you can subscribe to the channel, my channel on YouTube. I need more subscribers. I'm just new on YouTube. Um, somebody has caught wind of my Somalia post on YouTube and seems to have posted it somewhere because for some reason people are watching that, which I find, you know, nice and surprising. And I hope, I always hope they don't make people from whatever country mad because I'm massacring their food or something. But uh, do my best. So, okay, time to dice the tomatoes. See, I lied when I said I was done with chopping. But I knew there was something else, and a good thing I noticed it now and not later. So we've got a, a lot of Lady Smith Black Mombasa going here because we listened to a lot of other South African stuff. On the previous two nights, um, I threw in a lot of um, Hugh Masakela to go in afterwards here also. Um, and... Uh, who else? Oh, of course, um, Mary McCabe, which I did before. Um, but, you know, there's always more. She had a very long and distinguished career as a singer and civil rights activist. So, uh, her memory remains as does her music. And this right here is um, the sort of like one of the best of Lady Smith Black Mambazo. It's not easy finding music from every country. Uh, since I've been starting doing the musical accompaniment business. Um, some countries are damn, damn tricky. Like Saudi Arabia was surprisingly tricky because music is banned in Saudi Arabia. So, officially. So, it's a, that's always a challenge. That was a challenge. Um, but some of these smaller countries, I don't know. Justin, how you doing, my good man? Thank you for the like and the restream. We're chopping up some tomatoes. Um... You know, I'm starting to develop little calluses, little knife calluses. Uh, my uh, slicing hand, which I did not expect. But I hear the chefs get repetitive stress injuries, which uh, is sad. I guess you need to be the ergonomic chef. Which probably explains why they wear clogs. Not clogs, what do you call those things? Crocs. The disgusting Crocs. Um, it's like sacrificing fashion for the good of... I don't know. You're back. Um, so, what's your dish for today? Today we're making bunny chow. Durban bunny chow. And it involves neither bunnies nor chow. Discuss. Uh, what it is, uh, and there's a special surprise at the very end, what makes it really unusual um, is what comes at the end and, that's a li and how it's served and that's where the surprise comes in. So, if you can't make it for the end, you know, check it out on YouTube or on Catch after... Uh, or on the blog afterwards, and you'll see. Um, wow, music is banned in Saudi Arabia? Indeed it is. It's very, very sad. Um, uh, there, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Uh, because of the internet, there's, you know, people... Oddly enough, one of the things that's, you know, big popular uh, online, the people are putting on SoundCloud and stuff, young people, or some, you know, like death metal in Saudi Arabia, which is very odd. Um, I mean, there's like a whole article on that in Wikipedia. Um, but yes, it's, 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 it just breaks my heart. Um, but you know, there's the whole, there's a whole thing. Um, it's, it's, you know, part and parcel of kind of what's going on in the world and the news, which I'd rather not discuss right now. But, um, Wahhabism, Saudi Arabia is the home of Wahhabism. Look up Wahhabism 
and you'll get a better understanding of all the other drama that's happening. And the banding music is sort of kind of part of that. Sad to say. Um, but, happy times. We are doing South Africa. And we have chopped our tomatoes. Yay! Okay, so we've got uh, just two more things to put aside, and then we're ready to finally start cooking. And it, uh, I hope I'm not, I'm, I'm usually late on the dinner. So I'm wondering, again, if this is gonna be one of those weird nights where it's early. I started at 5.30, hoping that, you know, knowing that I'm slow, that uh, I'm hoping that uh, things wouldn't, you know, be too dramatic. Because again, I've been off on my timing every damn time lately. Which country today? Today we're cooking South Africa, country number 160. And this food is called Durban Bunny Chow. It is from Durban, which uh, I don't know which way you're looking at it. So, you know, here's South Africa, you know, me, me, me. And there's like uh, East Coast, uh, no, sorry, the West Coast here, and then the East Coast here, and here's where Durban is on the Indian Ocean. Hence, this uh, basically what amounts to an Indian dish, sort of South African Durban style. Which means two more things that I have to set aside, uh, very briefly. Um, it did not say fresh, it did say ground, and since I have ground ginger sitting here, I figure I might as well make use of it. Because otherwise it's, oh my god, where is it? Well, I could use fresh if I had to. I just assumed that I didn't have any. It's my turmeric. Um, oh, tell me I don't have to grind some more. I mean, I can, but I don't want to. I think I may have actually run out of it. In fact, I think I did. That's crazy. I so said cayenne pepper will be using that later. Come on. You're telling me I really don't have any. I guess I am um, going with the uh, fresh ginger, which there's nothing wrong with that. It just means more prep, which sucks. But it just so happens I bought ginger. So good thing I was prepared. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Um, so fresh ginger. We're going for two teaspoons worth. Um, Teaspoons? Two teaspoons. Okay, I say, where's my knife? Uh, okay, I say you equal two teaspoons right there. You will go away. Save you for later. Save it for later. Save it for later. I'm not trying to get my brain messed up here. Okay, so we're gonna peel the ginger trash is over here. Um, Lola, thank you for the like. How is everybody doing on this Tuesday? Uh, the weather's finally starting to vaguely change here in South Florida. I was actually, I can actually run during the day without dying. So, Instead of having to run in the dark, I run during the daytime and dodge surfboards. Lots of people with surfboards. And today was a very, very windy day. So there was all these kite surfers out. Um, surfers, surfers everywhere. And those boards are long. Someone's walking on the sidewalk with a surfboard. Longwise, and you say, excuse me, and they turn sideways. Suddenly you're running into a surfboard. So, I always have to keep my wits about me. Then I'm out there. Uh, Fabuloso! Leslie, how you doing? Do you speak Spanish? Seguro que sí, soy puertorriqueño. Um, de vez en cuando pasan la gente aquí hablando español. Y si quiere, puedo hablar español. Puedo hablar como los españoles si quiere. Puedo cocinar España en... Tres, cuatro semanas? Pues etapas. Me imagino, y papas bravas. So, that was my old... Uh, I need to peel, I need to peel my ginger, lol. Uh, yes. Um, well, it tastes funny if you don't <laughs> peel your ginger, that is. Um, ¿De dónde eres? Maripenso. Um, 
when um, the, the whole linguistic differences in Spanish between countries and such is a, is a constant source of conversation. Um, but when I was in high school, um, I was out on the PE field, and the uh, non-Cuban, non-Puerto Rican, Latino students tend to, to stick together and not really speak to anyone else. And they saw me on the PE field, and I was maybe I said something in Spanish or understood something they said. And they turned to me, and then in Spanish, and mind you, these people were like, they were Central American. And they said, uh, with a basic question, they say, ¿De dónde eres vos? And I just looked at them sideways. I said, what did you just ask me? Because um, that, to my ears, sounded like as if you were in English, and someone said, where art thou from? That's kind of what it sounded like to me. Um, so that they were asking where I was from. Um, but uh, it's just, again, the differences between the way people speak in different countries. Sometimes it feels like whole other language. In fact, my cousin was just here and she was discussing the telenovelas that are, they're all filmed in Miami. And she said she can't deal with it because they all have, she said this generic Miami accent, which I was, in Spanish, Miami, and I was thinking, which is like sort of like, she said it's like a made up accent. It's like not enough of one and too much of the other. Uh, okay, bye. Okay, thanks for coming by. Uh, 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 okay, meanwhile. Um, okay, I still have a piece of here. Bye-bye. Okay. Sorry about the delay on the ginger. I had forgotten that I finally got through that last piece of ginger. Is that my husband showing up? Hello, Chef Cliff. Yes, it is. Yay. So we're chopping the ginger to get, um, what is it, two, well, the equivalent of two table teaspoons. Teaspoons, teaspoons. Because we didn't have ground, but we'll do fresh. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. And chopping, chopping the ginger. You know what? I probably should have grated it, but screw it. I can do this too. Yo soy americano, ha ha. Pero tú que sabes que yo no soy un dominicano. Seguro que sí. Justin here, who impressively like learned Spanish and Mandarin like on his own, which blows my mind. You need to give, you need to give my husband lessons. Yes. See, that's him feeling sheepish on the side. My well, you know, it happens. Dude, hey, you can learn Spanish for our 25th anniversary. That'll be the surprise. He'll give, up, give a speech in Spanish. That gives you six months. Okay. Uh, uh, Martina says hello. Hello, Martina. Yes. Okay, so um, in lieu of dried ginger, we have gr um, fresh chopped ginger. So that should be good enough. Right there. So now that uh, I didn't lie that I finished chopping, I can clean this off and actually get the last ingredient ready to go before we start actually cooking. The last ingredient um, is something if you're looking for, you probably will have to go to an Indian market because that's about the only place I've ever found it. Um, one of the challenges uh, throughout the entire project um, hasn't been so much finding weird uh, proteins um, because, you know, you're not going to... Uh, does he want to learn? Yes. Yes, he does. It's been it's been a whole thing. Um, very much is the air answer. Classes, listen to tapes, use software. I bought that uh, honey gelato stuff. Um, hey, Dashi, how you doing? Um, yes, he does. He does want to learn, and you're not too far. Well, I mean, you're not too close, but you're not too far either. <laughs> ah, meanwhile. Um, okay, one more thing, and this is the ingredient that you kind of have to find at an Indian market. And the kind of sad part for me. Hold on, gotta find it. Ah! They're going everywhere. 
to curry leaves. Today. I did not go to Indian Market today. These are curry leaves that have been sitting here for a while, so they're kind of dried curry leaves, but I'll have to just deal with that. Um, blum, 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 and I need how many of them? I need six of them. So as you can see, they come in batches, like big enough for someone who cooks Indian every day. Um, and uh, that, sadly, is not moi. Um, so by the time I get around to them, they're dried, but Better dried than not at all. So two, three, four. Let's get a bigger one. Four, five, six. Let's make it seven. Just because they're dried. So we've got our curry leaves right there. And uh, we're ready to start cooking. So, uh, let's move, and hopefully you won't fall into the batter this time. It injured everyone. Hi, Ms. Jonesy, how you doing? How's the, how's, how's, how's the, the pup and the kids? Uh, he, okay. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of vessel in which to cook this. And then I realized it should be the usual saucepan because it has to hold enough. Now, I kind of did a thing. What do the leaves do in regards to flavor? Uh, they give, they the flavor kind of comes out of the leaves. Uh, see you next time. Ben is calling. Okay, thank you for coming by, Jurgen. Uh, see you next time. Uh, check you out on YouTube or whatever. Thank you. Um, uh, where am I going here? Um, okay, that's right. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna add half a cup of oil. I'm using olive oil. That's gonna go into the saucepan. You know what, I'm gonna use the one on this side. Switch, troop movement. Went to town. Kids and dogs, still insane. Well, you know, kinda how they did, how are you, Tasha? Oh, that's very sweet, Austin. Thank you very much, I am doing fine. Um, uh, this is our third night of South Africa, doing making a Durban bunny chow, which I do not know why it's called Durban bunny. I know it's called Durban bunny chow. I don't know exactly why it's called bunny chow, other than the how it is uh, presented, which is the surprise thing that comes at the very end. So if you want to see the surprise, um, I'm not gonna spoil it till the end. So you'll have to come back if you have other stuff to do or see it later on YouTube, and you can fast forward past all the boring stuff. So we're, um, but I think it might be called bunny chow because normally it is eaten with the hands, which we are not going to be doing. But half a cup of olive oil. It doesn't say what kind of oil, but I'm using olive oil. Um, riding an alligator? Um, okay, so in here, once this is heated up, and I'm gonna need another bowl sitting by. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, heating up the oil in a pan, getting my onion, my chopped onion here, and my bowl of various spices, which if you missed it before, we have star anise, uh, cumin seed, fennel, uh, uh, cinnamon stick, and uh, whole ground cardamom pods. So that's what that is. Um, and, uh, do ba do do ba do do ba do okay, so, wait till this is hot enough, and I'm making pumpkin doll tonight, ooh, that sounds interesting, you know, I have, um, doll, I have big bags of it that I did for India, and it's just sitting there, uh, which I'm hoping, um, something that I make for Sri Lanka in, like, what, three, four weeks, will finally, um, Give me a chance to use more of that. Okay, here, oh, that's it, I need the iPad. Um, Alrighty, Roo, the 10 millionth picture of onion going into a pot of oil, my goodness. How many can you stand? Okay, now the premise here, one description of one of the versions of this. 
oddly enough, said, um, get a Gnostic pan and get a cheap one that you don't mind destroying. Now, I do not I do mind destroying this. Red lentil and butternut pumpkin. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Um, uh, but uh, we aren't going to be destroying anything here. Um, but uh, it does say that stuff will wind up sticking to the pan for a while. I wonder if the stronger olive oil taste will change the final taste. Probably not a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's a good point. And it didn't really occur to me until you just said that. Um, but we'll find out. That is odd. Uh, normally, I guess it would be canola oil or vegetable oil with an Indian dish. Hmm. Well, we're going to find out. So, um... Now we're gonna add the uh, spices here and drop them in. And the premise is to cook till the onion is glassy, AKA transparent. Um, we don't need a second bowl. Um, can I take a picture of that? Yes, I did. Okay. While it's a Jamie Oliver recipe. Oh, yours. Uh, um, Hey, uh, Clifton, thank you for the restream, my good man. Um, so, very quickly, while this is cooking, I need to get in this bowl uh, some more spices, which I need this for that. Uh, I need um, uh, three tablespoons of garam masala. Um, you can buy garam masala, uh, which is a spice mix. Uh, however, I did make my own a while ago, so uh, I might as well use it. Three tablespoons. Okay, that's a lot. One. That's one and a half. Make that two. Uh, golly gee, I'm gonna have to dig into the box of other garam masala that I had purchased. Good thing I had it because I needed it. So we're mixing garam masalas. They're different colors too. So that's what three tablespoons of garam masala looks like. And it smells like heaven. Okay. So this jar is empty and I need to turn down the heat on this sucker. Uh, garam masala, then what goes in? One teaspoon of ground coriander. Uh, maybe I can put it so you can see both things. Uh, ground coriander, which I have uh, day, 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 right here. Okay, so uh, one teaspoon of ground coriander. Okay. Okay, and one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is gonna give it the spicy spiciness. So grab cayenne pepper coming right up. One teaspoon of that. Golly gee, we're gonna run out of cayenne pepper. Okay, and take a picture. Okay, and after the cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of turmeric. Somewhere there's a lid for that. Here it is. And uh, two teaspoons. I'm glad I pulled these out before. Two. Two teaspoons of turmeric. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna run out of turmeric again. Come back. One. And one more. So we got a big bowl of spices right there. And thankfully that is that for those. So back to you. These uh, onions, do they appear glassy? I mean, soft is what we're looking for. Uh, it would be easier to tell if I'd use the uh, vegetable oil, the canola oil instead. Uh, it looks like they are. So now I'm going on to add the, let me put this away, give it another second. 
uh, coriander, cayenne, and over here is Mr. Tomato. Okay, spin that wheel. Okay. Now, uh, we're adding in our second uh, batch of spices. And it says to kind of cook it until it sort of sticks to the pan. Which is kind of a weird, hey, thank you for the restream. Um, I need a name. Uh, sit. Okay, let me, get me, let me get that because I want to get it right. Kaisha? Kaisha, yes, hello, thank you for liking the restream. Salivating here, oh good. That's what we like. So getting this all good and sticky. And uh, it says, you know, fry until they stick to the pan on a non-stick. I don't really want to do that, but there's uh, something that happens next. Now, I did everything full size, you know, the full recipe, except for the meat, which is coming later. Um, that I did at half, and I hope that's okay. Because I really don't need, you know, two pounds of meat, because that's more than we can handle, even with leftovers. Because there's always another dish right around the corner. Because then there's next week. Which, eh, uh, I don't know. I haven't investigated. I know what country we're doing next week, week but uh, food-wise, uh, it's going to be kind of sad. And I can't imagine that there's a whole lot of options for next week. But we'll deal with that next week. Today we're doing South Africa. So, uh, okay, it's a little sticky. I, I mean, I don't, this is a non-stick pan. It's not going to actually stick, I think. Um, so good to see you, Cliff. Your streams always make me hungry. Oh, thank you so much. So we tried, this is gonna be super delicious. Like I said at the beginning, um, the, uh, this dish is from Durban, which is on the east coast of South Africa. It originated uh, from um, Indian, people of Indian extraction, um, who, because of apartheid, uh, people couldn't eat together. Um, so uh, this would be served in restaurants, but because of the apartheid system, this dish was sort of created to allow people who couldn't be allowed into the restaurant to eat, to eat the dish. And that's what the whole thing at the end of how it's served comes in. But you'll see that at the end. Uh, right now, um, we're going to, let me get my lamb out, and then uh, we're going to put in the tomatoes, which we have over here, do do do, our chopped tomatoes, and our lamb. The, I went to the market, and I bought my lamb, and it said to get a two pound leg of lamb, I was only going to go for a pound. Uh, como que huele, huele, increíble. Mmm, mira, tom... No te gusta? Very good. Uh, uh, Derek. Derek with the, up with the Spanish there. Okay. Um, I asked uh, for like a pound of leg of lamb, and I know that that would kind of make the uh, butcher a little nuts. And so they said, oh, give him a pound of lean lamb. And I said, well, it's going to be chopped into cubes. And, uh, and I figured I would wind up doing that myself. And I'll be darned if... They were nice enough and spent the time to chop it into cubes for me, which um, saves you a lot of boring watching me chop meat into cubes. Um, huele? Mm, que bueno. Okay. So. <clears throat> oh my. Okay. So I say that's um, sticky enough. So uh, now we're going to add the tomatoes. And the premise is, uh, stir, stir until what's sticking comes loose. And I don't know if I was supposed to cube, because that would give it more liquid to, you know, de-stick, whatever, but I made that executive decision. So the liquid from the tomatoes is supposed to sort of liquefy what's sticking. That's the idea. And I have it at like at a medium, medium heat. Um, I've kind of learned what the, the settings on this oven are. I'd always blame the oven for everything and then I found out that, oh, it's not so much the oven is the problem, 
as the combination of nonstick cookware and an electric range. Um, so here I was blaming the range the whole time. A nice butcher is nice to have, yes. And you know what, I think the market that, that's around the corner, there was a guy behind the, the meat counter that I would tend to avoid because he would give me like all kinds of attitudes. Because I know that their policy is that if you see a package is too big, they'll, you know, they'll cut it in half for you. They have no problem doing that. And sometimes that means that, you know, that they can't really use the other half of whatever. And like in the case of a whole picnic, as it's called, uh, of pork. Um, but, you know, they will, but this one guy would give me all this attitude and I'd avoid him and I don't know if he's still there because the manager was there and he was like told the guy this they were basically they're very nice and good and it's like good yay I wonder if they got the feedback I feel that one they'll you know how do we do deals and I said everyone there is really really nice except the guy behind the meat counter now the guy behind the meat counter is a really nice guy so I can go back yay be right back not a problem dashi um, uh, I think, that's Derek, I think gas is easier to cook with, it gives you more control. Yes, I wish I had gas. And you know what, um, when we were just in Orlando a couple of weeks ago, friend, visiting friends of ours, they were saying how, um, oh look, here's a picture of our kitchen, and I said yes, and says, look at that, gas. And I was like, ah, I want, see want must have, can't leave my water. Okie doke. Seeing how many people are here. So, um, it wasn't really sticking before, so, like, till it stopped sticking, it's kind of a hard thing to judge. Um, it's not as sticky. The tomato is releasing the, the water, and I have it on a medium heat. And I have to remember when eating this to not eat the cinnamon stick or the star anise, which is, didn't say, I mean, to pull it out, which is gonna be tricky. Well, this seems to be frothy enough, so it's time. Uh, I always heard gas is to cook with too. I always burn food on gas stoves, not used to it for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never tried, so that would certainly be a learning curve for me. And I was watching, I think it was uh, Victor, on the Swedish Food TV, he was doing something. And it was, it was on the gas, and I was just seeing the gas like burning the bottom of the pot, and I was thinking, wow, that's like a thing that happens. I'm scooping these out because uh, sometimes when I just dump it in, there's that plasticky thing on the bottom I wind up dumping in too. Which is always an oops, oops, oops moment. Okay, so this is a uh, lamb, lean lamb. Uh, they cubed it for me, uh, and this is one pound. It's supposed to be two pounds, I got one pound. It's intended to be cubed, they cubed it, yay. So, uh, after we've added the lamb, we're gonna add our other three ingredients, uh, four actually. So we're gonna add our ginger, which would have been dried, but is now fresh instead. Ta-da! And... I'm gonna take a picture. And our garlic. Now I hope it wasn't a huge mistake, you know, like only cutting back on the meat. But you know, I, I, I don't know, I found that that doesn't hurt me too bad because I really like intense flavors. And our curry leaves which are a little dried, but you know, I wasn't gonna make another trip to the Indian market, which is like 45 minutes away, just for six old curry leaves. And, um, it says to simmer for 30 minutes uh, or more until the lamb is almost tender. Which um, I find interesting because uh, there isn't a whole lot of water involved there. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this out. I'm going to lower the heat down to a simmer. You know what? I'm going to add a little water. 
because uh, I think it needs it. There's gonna be water added later anyway. See, things I'm learning. How much ginger was that? It was supposed to be two tablespoons, two teaspoons um, of ground ginger. So it was about like an inch of ginger is uh, what I chopped up. I hope that wasn't wrong. I couldn't find Crayley's this morning, had to buy powder. See, that's the thing that gets me. I mean, it has totally baffled me since day one, like defining the word curry. Because a curry is, you know, like the whole thing is a liquid dish is a curry. There's curry powder, which I now find out is, um, uh, I, I wish I spoke Arabic. Um, assalamu assalam alaikum. Uh, that's, that's about as much Arabic as I know, but thank you for coming by. Sultans, I think you've seen, I've seen, I think I've seen you come by before. Hope you're having a good day. This is a Durban bunny chow, uh, from South Africa. And now we're going to simmer that and I'm going to cover it and we're going to simmer it for about half an hour which gives me time to clean. And again, if you have any questions, this is a good time to ask them because uh, it's not that exciting watching me wash stuff. But sometimes, you know, that's that's what we do because I am not didn't want to make a whole dish. Oh dear. Um, if someone could translate that for me, that would be really lovely. Um, uh, hold on, where am I? Uh, back up. The best stream on American Swedish food too. Victor cooks in the restaurant home with gas. Yes, Victor is very good. Um, so, a a anyone with translation uh, capabilities, um, you're welcome to give me a hand. Uh, and you don't need to watch me washing the dishes. Uh, I watch these guys. Great interactive stream. Yes, yes, they are really great. Um, I've watched them since I started on, on Meerkat. I haven't, the last few days, it's been just really hit and miss with me watching stuff, though. Uh, Sultans, thank you for the like. Thank you very much. Uh, let me give you a follow back. Sultan Zuz. Uh, and Drew, thank you for the restream. How are you doing? We are cooking a Durban bunny chow. I really don't know why it's called bunny chow, but uh, um, I always thought it was like called a Durban Thai because what I said, uh, when I first encountered this dish, was when my global cooking, global traveling friend, I'm, the glo I'm, his, I'm his global cooking friend. So he's actually been to every country on the planet and all without flying. Um, but when he was in South Africa, he talked about being in Durban and having this dish and he said it's the most insane thing he's had and it tasted so good. And I said, I have to make that when I get to cook South Africa. And I asked one of my South African friends like months and months ago, what should I cook when I get to South Africa? I want to do this Durban thing. And he said, well, you should do a dish that's representative of the native population. Hey, Drew. And um, and I said, well, I'd love to, but um, it was hard to find because, uh, I mean, there's a few things, there's sort of like a beef jerky kind of thing, which one could make, but you can't really make it, you know, live on, on the internet like this because, you know, you take meat, you dry it for a long time which you know, doesn't translate. Um, and then there's sausage. They make great sausage. Um, however, uh, I don't, I've never made sausage before. And um, the, I don't have the machinery to put the sausage in the casings. So that was kind of off the table. I mean, unless I wound up getting lessons in sausage making. Then when I go back around, I get to like Germany and all this, I'll be, you know, I'll be set. I'll make my own kielbasa and such. Um, so that's the thing with sausage. That, that happened when I cooked Germany. That I said, well, I'm not making the sausage, but I'm cooked. I'm, but I made sure to buy sausage that was uncooked and I cooked the sausage, which there wasn't much to that. Well, no, actually I did have to soak it in beer. So that was... That was a step. But you'll notice that since you've seen me on here, uh, only once have I ever set foot out to the grill, and even then it was a disaster. Because the grill is outside, and the grill seems to know when I want to cook there, 
because uh, it will start raining without fail. And now that I'm doing this, like being out there in the dark, that would be really weird. Because I don't have enough light on the... Uh, and now we don't have any propane either. So... Which something tells me we'll need to remedy before we get to uh, have company in a few weeks. There's a big boat parade that happens here in Jupiter. There's uh, the, in, the Intercoastal Waterway. So we're in Florida, and so... Mm, mm, Florida! Okay, so down here's Miami, and then, you know, here's Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach, and, and there's like Miami Beach, and these are all islands that go along the edge, the barrier islands, and we're on one of them way up here. Um, but there's this big boat parade that goes along the intercoastal at, uh, in a few weeks, big, you know, Christmas boat parade. So everyone has their sailboats and whatever, and they dress them up with lights, and we just kind of walk out and watch them, and we're having a parade party for that. So we'll be cooking something. And, uh, I'm thinking that, uh, it lands in the middle of Sri Lanka week. So I'm wondering if I sh maybe I could, you know, do it live. You can you can watch for yourself. There'll be people, and I'll be cooking food and serving it to multiple people. Or I could be camera shy and respect my guests' privacy. Or I could um, do any either of those two and cook. Um, if I did Spanish food the week before, once I've tried it, I could try it again and make uh, tapas for for the, the guests, um, which is probably more of a party food anyway, since you get small portions. Um, so all we have left is the uh, potatoes, which are sitting right here. They're gonna wind up going into the dish back over here when that's ready, with some of the water. Um, I'm gonna clean this off, but then, you know, I'm gonna give you a sneak preview on the, uh, the weird and magical serving process, because, you know, it has to happen anyway. Uh, but let me clean this off. So, but what do you think? What what should I do? Like I said, I will have I will have just finished cooking Spain. Come the uh, come the party. And I don't. I mean, I, I know I'm gonna have to make a paella. I assume I'm gonna be making tapas, you know, for one night or more, um, which is weird, as you know, serving dinner to two people to make tapas. But hey. Um, uh, but then it's gonna be Sri Lanka, and I don't know how, you know, how cool my friends are on spicy foods of the subcontinent. So, uh, that's what gets me about my friends. Um, uh, awesome, uh, Mirza. Uh, is this dish served with a bread or rice? Ah, you're getting very, very, you're, you're like right on the money. Uh, um, but it's not how, it's not with, it's, uh, it, that's where the how comes in. Uh, Mirza, Ms. Big from Chicago, hello, thank you for the like. Greetings uh, from uh, Florida to Chicago, where I'm guessing it is chilly right now. Hey Siri, what's the weather like in Chicago right now? Thinking, thinking. It is 59 degrees. That's a, uh, I could do 59 degrees. I sweat weather. Sweat weather. I would love to be running in, I had to run in, I was happy the weather went down to 81 degrees. Um, so I could run. I do much better when it's colder. Which in Florida is like never. Uh, um, chicken. Chicken? What about chicken? Uh, Eli, uh, what say you about chicken? Uh, True Nahar, thank you for being a first time watcher. Thank you for making us a stop on your route here on the world of Meerkat. It was raining. Oh, well, that's not good. Um, especially if it's cold rain. Although, again, when I'm running, I like pray for rain. Um, here it only thunderstorms. There's no such thing as just rain. It's like rain equals thunderstorm. Um, okay, so here is the, the magic surprise that we've been promising all along. And it's going to involve the plating process. So I need to get my plates out. Giving 
doing a preview of the surprise. Because, are you ready for it? Okay. We have 15 minutes before the meat's ready. But, what the hell? This right here is a loaf of white bread. Unsliced, bakery fresh white bread. Now, I wanted, well, I, I was nervous about making this for this very reason. The husband is very wigged out by the mere thought of white bread. So that's why he went and got bakery fresh, unsliced white bread from the fresh market. Now, in South Africa, it says use a square loaf of white bread that they call um, a government government loaf. Uh, thank you for the restream, Mirza, Ms. Baig. Um, now, I'm kind of wigged out because this is a weird, unusual concept for me. So I'm processing. But here's what happens. Oh, I need to take pictures of this. This is very important. Okay. Okay. So we've got... Now, the thing is that I was afraid to make the dish because uh, at the regular market they didn't have a loaf of regular white bread. And I did get a recipe to make my own. So I was going to bake my own. I bought extra yeast just for that purpose. I was going to bake my own loaf of white bread. And then the husband said, I surprised you with a loaf of white bread. So the good part is I didn't have to spend an extra two hours like hoping that yeast would finally work for me. Okay, so we've got our loaf of white bread. You can slice it in half. Oh my god, I don't know how this is gonna work. Kathy, how you doing? We are making Durban bunny chow and here's our secret ingredient. The loaf of white bread. <sighs> After we get the loaf of white bread, this is so big, oh my god. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, okay. <sighs> Knife into the bread. Cutting into the bread this way. 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 And then, you got me there. It was a surprise. Yes, indeedy. And we grab the innards of the bread and we rip them out. So we have a big hollow piece of bread. So that's that's one. Uh, might as well take a picture of that. As I said, my friend said, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen and it's super delicious. So, but the weird part is gonna be, how do you save leftovers? Which I think you might be getting the idea as to what the challenge here is. Okay, we're going this way. And then we're going this way. Did I go this way already? This is Hugh Masekale in the background. I turned it down so it's harder to hear, but Less competition, less copyright issues. Okay, so we've taken, yay, Kathy. So we've taken out the this, hmm. So, so we have, you know, bread hole number one with, and very important, what was inside. Same here, hole where this used to be there. That gets set aside, because that's, for later. Now, I'm gonna wash off my knife. Uh, I think I'm going to check on our, or thank you for the claps. Clappity clap, Kathy. Um, timing, okay. Nuts, okay, hold that thought. Um, something I told myself I was gonna do before I started, and then I forgot. So I always do my uh, status update. Uh, on my dish. So, uh, here we go. Tonight, comma, we round the culinary cape as we dine on the food of dot 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 South Africa. 
Exclamation point. I said cape, not tape. It's usually quite good at that. Capital C. Not out of. Mmm, kisses back to you. That center came out perfect. Well, yeah, cl close enough. Uh, close enough for horseshoes. Uh, of, of, not out. Is my pronounce, is my Miami accent that bad? Of, not the G at the end. Tonight we round, not a round, we round. Or, got it, okay. I've been meaning to do that. I'm sorry I didn't do that. Uh, alrighty. So, thank you for, uh, hey Reigns fan, uh, thank you for the like and the restream, and thank you for putting up with me doing my Facebook status update while I do that. Um, by the way, you can follow on Facebook uh, at Cliffy Lamb, the Global Cooking Challenge. If you're on, if you're a Facebooker, if you're a Twitterer, you can follow on Twitter at Cliffy Land. Oh, I got something on me. No, I'm a pretty apron from the fine folks at the Funky Fairy. I need to remember to treat that, whatever it was. Okay. Uh, when you said the dish was called Bunny, I thought you had pulled a rabbit out of that loaf. Maybe that's what that, you know. And maybe, because the people eat it with their hands. That's it says, it's meant to be eaten with the hands. We're not eating with our hands. But it's meant to be eaten with the hands um, because it's a street food. You know, I hate this light. Every time a light hits me, I look like I have a square head. Um, the, uh, but it's meant to be eaten with the hands. We're not eating it with the hands. Um... But, uh, so imagine, I imagine you look like a bunny eating like this. Uh, okay, so let's go back and see how uh, we're doing over here with our innards. So, bubble, bubble, bubble. Well, that did liquefy some, didn't it? Now I wonder if I needed to add water. Well, there's supposed to be water added when you add the potatoes, so I guess I can skip that part. I didn't even say how much water. Here, smell. Mmm. You know what? I'm gonna taste that sucker. Yes, I am. See how that's going. Uh, maybe it's good. And uh, you go here and just in case. Okay, let's see how you're doing. It said until the lamb is almost tender. So, that would be another 10 minutes allegedly, or so, allegedly. But then again, I'm only using one pound instead of two pounds of lamb. And that has to affect things. Oh, my God. Very tasty, but wow, that is hot. I mean, that's like spicy hot. And that's a lot of cayenne pepper. Sucker needs salt, though. No one said a damn thing about salt. No one said a thing about salt. Need salt. It's like the recipe didn't say a thing. Sometimes I think it assumes that you know. But honestly, there's some rest some cuisines like the uh, Oceana cuisines that none of the recipes mention a thing about salt. And then I read that uh, they basically don't season their food. And I'm thinking, well, that would make your food kind of suck. So you'll see when I when I cooked uh, a few weeks ago when I cooked what was it? Uh, what are we in Solomon Islands? I kind of cheated and added salt and pepper and a little MSG just to make it work, and it did. But it wasn't, you know, what you'd expect. Speaking of expecting, uh, didn't say anything about pepper, but I'm gonna add pepper too. I mean, that's always a gimme, right? Well, that cayenne, whoo, who doggies. That was hot. Maybe maybe I should cut that in half after all. 
mean, we don't have like coconut or anything to, to you know, cut the heat. Like serve it with like a cup of yogurt or something. Okay, let's taste that sucker again. Okay. The, the, the meat is still a wee bit chewy. Oh, wait a minute. Ah! Put it in here so it doesn't drip. Mmm! Yes, that definitely helps. Mmm! That's much better. You know, when I cook, and you know, you'd think I would have learned the whole seasoning thing way early, because when I cooked Botswana way back in the letter B, like ages before Meerkat, we're still in 2012 at this point, um, I cooked the food of Botswana, which ironically is, is a neighboring nation of uh, South Africa. By the way, Botswana is beautiful. La comida es deliciosa. Muchísimas gracias, Derek. Now I'm talking like Spaniards. Everyone speaks with a lisp. We'll get into that when we, when we cook Spain, though. Um, any case, um, I forgot where I was. I lost my mind. Oh yes, Botswana. Botswana, very close to South Africa, and if you have the chance to travel to that part of the world, um, from everything I've read, I would really recommend Botswana, because it seems really, really beautiful, and they have a good amount to offer, um, from, you know, seeing nature to, uh, to beyond in history. Um, in any case, Botswana, uh, the dish I did, for, one dish I did for them was, uh, and again, remember that's way back in B, so I was really just getting started, um, was uh, boiled beef, which sounds as ridiculously easy as it could. I was shocked when I came back from the grocery store with like, you know, beef, and that's it. Um, but it was just basically beef boiled in water for like a crazy, crazy, crazy long time until it got really tender. Um, because in Botswana, and I guess this is appropriate because the same, um, some of the same ethnic groups are, are you know, in South Africa. Uh, uh, the pre since meat is rare, uh, it's only eaten on special occasions there. And so a big hunk of beef would be hung from a tree, and then the men, you know, would spend all day just beating it with a stick to tenderize it, and then it would be eaten. Um, so to approximate that, just boil the beef for a crazy long time, but the guy who, you know, had posted the initial blog and recipe said the magic of this is you may have to make have the right amount of seasoning, then it, like, comes alive. And I thought, this is just beef and water, but damn it, it was tasty as hell. You had to pound it, though. Because after you boiled it, you had to like pound it into shreds. Which tenderized it even more. I feel like I should have like yogurt right now. But that was hot. But it's a good thing we like hot food. It is. Oh, speaking of hot food. Um, I've referenced before like how um, genetically being Puerto Rican. I'm not programmed to like hot food. Uh, our food is like the opposite of hot. It is, you know, bland. It, it's delicious, but not not at all spicy. So what? Uh, so uh, I, but when I cooked the food of Bhutan, um, I did sort of like their national dish, which is sort of like a mac and cheese, but they make it with yak dairy. And good luck finding yak yak cheese in the U.S. Even though a friend of mine on Facebook said, hey, look, I just had yak cheese. And I'm like, why didn't you get it to me when I was cooking Bhutan? Um, he, uh, so I, I approximated the yak dairy with other cheeses. But the mac and mac and cheese is all hot peppers. So it's like two cups of jalapeno peppers with Szechuan peppercorns. And that damn thing altered my DNA to now the point that I can handle hot food pretty easily. Um, and the reason I bring this up now is that there's a guy who follows me on Twitter now and just reblogged my whole, you know, Cliffy Land blog just today on his own page. His, he's in New York City and his goal is to eat his way around the world only by eating in restaurants in New York City uh, uh, of countries with over a million people. 
So he just, this week, ate at a restaurant eating bhutan, and he had that very dish. And I was thinking, oh my god! I just went, you know, I remember going crazy trying to find, you know, that this the yak dairy for that dish, and he actually ate it, and it, I think they said they toned down the heat for the American audiences. But the damn thing altered my DNA. Okay, I say that's been in there long enough, because it does feel kind of tender enough. In fact, I'm going to taste it one more time. I really feel I should have some dairy. I don't know what I would do. Come on. Okay, see how tender it is. Again with this, okay. Mmm. Mm hmm That's it, okay, it's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna drain my potatoes. Get out my iPad. Okie dokie. And I'm gonna add the potatoes in. And stir that up. It's said to add a little bit of water, but I already added the water. So I basically need to cook the potatoes for like about 15 minutes or so. Till they're soft. Oh my god, that is so spicy. Wow. It has an aftertaste too. Uh, tell the husband the Scottish guy is speaking Spanish. The Scottish guy is speaking Spanish. <laughs> oh, oh, ha ha ha. See, he got it before I did. <laughs> Um, and uh, do ba do do ba do do. So I'm gonna cover that up and let that simmer for about you know 15 minutes or so. See how that's going. Um, meanwhile, I really do. I'm serious. I need to get me uh, milk because my I'm sweating. My eyeballs are sweating now. Look at that. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. I still have the DNA, but somehow I can handle. <laughs> I can handle it. I just sweat like the Dickens, but I guess that's kind of what the intention is. Yeah, hot place. Hot part of the world. If you sweat more, you'll cool off faster. But yeah, I think I'm gonna have to keep a glass of milk nearby. Hey, thank you for the follow uh, and the like, uh, Gail. Gail, thank you for the follow and the like. Uh, okay, milk, because that's hot. Um, because, you know, milk is what cuts the heat. Um, coconut milk, dairy, um, bread, and cheese. Oh, that's where the bread comes in. Mmm. It hadn't really dawned upon me. And I think, what, citrus, maybe? Well, that's why dishes with coconut milk are so often spicy. Yes, because that's, you'll get the... Yeah, you'll have your coconut curries because the coconut kind of offsets the heat of the of the hot chilies. So that's how that works. Ah, no. Okay, so I've really cleaned, you know, just about everything. Uh, I see. I'm, I'm impressed. Well, I had time. I'm only doing one other dish. So. What's the other dish? No, one dish. One, I, I didn't mean to say other. My bad, I misspoke. Ah. Hmm, that lactose thing. Um, where's my water? Oh, here. So, how else is everybody doing? I have a student from Senegal, I need help. She won't eat anything. Um, eat anything that, that you have, I'm guessing? Um, um, you go go to my blog at cleffyland.com. You can see what I made for Senegal, which was a few weeks ago. Which, you know, my brain like stops because I sort of forget after a while, which is kind of sad. Uh, but I'm gonna have to remember quickly what I made for Senegal. Uh, but let me tell you, the um, uh, if you do a Google search for Jolof, J O L L O F. J O L L O F, uh, jollof rice. It's a chicken and rice dish. It's really simple. It's really basic. It's sort of like the national dish of most of West Africa. 
and every country makes it slightly differently, but it's super, super tasty. And it's basically chicken and rice. So there's nothing in there that like an American audience is gonna go like, Ew, um, but uh, it's uh, probably got peanuts. You're gonna find stuff with peanuts and spinach. Uh, what I did for Senegal, eh. Uh, what did I do for Senegal? Uh, I made tibadine, uh, the fish and rice, and the mafeginar, which is a peanut and chicken stew. Yeah, so you're gonna get a lot of stuff with peanuts um, and uh, peanut butter. Uh, oh, go to my blog and you can find uh, from Ghana, look up Ghana, and there's the peanut butter soup which uh, is out of this world. The one thing you will have to find if you're cooking traditional West African food is called red palm oil, which, uh, you know, you, I mean, if you can find it, try to find it at, like, you know, ethically grown and such, because there's a whole thing about that. But uh, if you have a Trader Joe's in your areas, they actually sell that now. Uh, I think Whole Foods now sells it again, now that they've probably gotten, like, an organic dealer or something. Um, you'll need that. Uh, it has an, an, an unusual smell, but it has a great taste when you mix it in. So, Senegal, mm, good stuff. Mm, things will do. I am near Niagara Falls. Husband loves Niagara Falls. And Niagara on the Lake. And Niagara on the Lake. Yes, I always say Niagara Falls is to tacky what Niagara on the Lake is to charming. So, uh, are you on the U.S. side or the Canada side? So you're like near Buffalo? Um, do they even have Trader Joe's up there? I wonder. Here, hold on. I'm going to check this out. Where is the closest Trader Joe's to Niagara Falls? Let's see what that says. Ah, there's one in Buffalo. So there you go. Uh, but if there's an uh, African market anywhere, um, there'll be big vats of red palm oil. Here, let me show you mine. Since I'm talking and I have time to kill, I have the, you know, not specifically organically grown red palm oil. So that's that's a much bigger jar than you'll need. See how big that is? You know, it's huge. Uh, but you can get a smaller one. Canada. So, uh, Find an African market or a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods or I, I, I hate Whole Foods, but you know, if you find one, you'll find it there. Um, or an African market, um, that'll be a must have at any African market you can find anywhere. Um, oh, you have one, and then great. Um, so, uh, but check that out. Cause I love West African food and there are 54 countries in Africa, and this uh, Amazon has red pommel. That, yes, that it does too. Like I said, if you can find it, if you can find it like, or, you know, ethically grown, organically grown, that's better for the world um, than otherwise, because kind of it's, red pommel is a little controversial because the way it's grown, they, you know, kind of global warming, destroying the environment to make palm oil. Because there's palm oil and all sorts of random, like, fast food stuff that you'll buy, you don't even know. Um, that's not red palm oil. Yes, you can get red palm oil from Bulk Barn. There you go. When I was cooking Angola, way back country number 10. 10? No, that wasn't 10. Angola. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Afghanistan, Kabul, 2, Albania, 3, Algeria... Four and door level five. Five. Week five. Um, it's awesome. Yes. Week five, I was cooking Angola and like red palm oil came up and you know my husband still remembers me going on the phone calling to every market, Do you have red palm oil? What? Uh. Red palm oil. No what? No, what is that? No, red Ugh. So yes, we scoured all of Palm Beach County, which is larger than the state of Delaware. No, sort of the state of Rhode Island, almost the size of Delaware. A lot of people don't know that. We live in the, in what is the largest populated county in the U.S. There are bigger counties in the U.S. that are like in Maine and stuff that are mostly like lakes and stuff. But you know, kind of just like where people live. In any city of any size. This is the biggest one. Which means I have to drive far, far away to find stuff on the regular. Yeah, I'm not having more milk. Um, 
let me see if by any chance these things have gotten tender in that short amount of time. Okay. And once more, I need my little ramekin. Ha mm ha! -mm. <laughs> Blinded you! I probably shouldn't have done that. Ah, there it went away. Amazon is organically grown. They also have bread palm oil sharding. Well, there you go. Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth is, Kenneth is your man. Kenneth is the food supply man. Kenneth took me up with uh, my sharpening stone, which I always used before I start, and the vegetable knives and cleavers that I that I I tend to use but haven't used lately. B. If if a hatchet murderer comes at me, I can always come at him with this too. Okay. Okay, time to taste. Here we go. Mm. Almost. Mm. That's getting better. Yes, that was a joke. Because I kind of knew it would do that. Oh my god. This tastes like the restaurant stuff. We love Indian food. He's crazy for Indian food. I never really had it growing up at all. I used a sharpening stone from the hardware store. Ah, see, he got me, he got me buying this sucker. And the two-sided one, one side is dark, one side is dark. It's like the force. Um, for first and then fine sharpening. Um, so, you know, I work it out, I work it out. And I soak it in water, just like Kenneth said. I soak it in water for about 10 minutes before using it. It does bubble. I know you're supposed to kind of do the water while you're sharpening, except I can't... I haven't figured out how to do that without making a mess. Oh! Okay. So, um... Mm -mm. Oh yes, I said I never really had Indian food much. Um, at all, ever growing up. And, and then I was on a... Maybe it was a date? Um, like some 30 some odd years ago. And a friend said, oh, well, there's a nice restaurant in your town, because he was visiting from out of town. And I said, oh yeah, no, it's there, but who eats Indian food? <laughs> That's weird. And so we sat down and ordered whatever was on the menu, and he's sitting in front of me, and we're talking, and we're talking, and I'm looking, and I'm going, why is your ear sliding down the side of your face? I started having hallucinations. It was just all, it was like everything was like spinning around. I just. This Puerto Rican boy couldn't deal with the, the, the strong flavors. But now, you know, this one, like, on, we have Indian food on a weekly basis. And some of the best stuff we've done in the past few weeks have involved curries. The stuff from the West Indies that involved curry, or that was Creole. Um, but we've had, um, it has to do with the British, like, uh, where the British brought in, you know, indentured servants from from India, all over the world, from Fiji to Guyana, to you know, you name it, and then they left behind um, their Indian cuisine that mixed in with the local, you know, cuisine. So it's really interesting. The best are Japanese whetstones. Um, well, I, maybe that's. I mean, I bought it from your knife place that you had me buy the knife. So um, I don't know if that's what that is, but. Seems to do the job. Ah, my goodness. I really hope I'm not coming down with something. Yebo. Yebo. Okay. So, um, I think that's uh, just about ready. I'm gonna give it one last taste. Is, uh, how's the, uh, the table going? The table? There's a table set. I will keep you from fogging up this time. Okay, the time has come. Now what I need to do, before I do anything, is pull out 
if I can find them. The, uh, well, obviously the cinnamon stick. But, uh, I don't know if I can find that star anise in there. Because that you can't eat. Where are you? Where are you, my pretty? I know you're in here somewhere. I don't want to find you in my mouth. I'm easily startled. Um, those are the curry leaves. I can eat that. I, I don't think it dissolved. Does it do that? Oh, we may find out the hard way. I mean, you can bite into a cardamom pod. That's not a problem. Ah, something just, steam just got in my eye. Oh my god. Hot, steamy steam. Hot, spicy steam. Okay, wow. Okay. We'll address that later. Wow. Okay. Here goes nothing. Yes, the trick is to store them in water. Yes. Uh, I don't store it in water, but uh, I soak it, so that's, I guess, the next best thing. Uh, wow, that really did hit my eye. Okay, here goes the weird magic. Bread. Bunny chow. Into... Into the bread. Fly friends, thank you for liking the restream. You say Anis, we say Anis. Uh, I don't even know what's right, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I guess I use them both interchangeably, hoping one of them is right. Uh, I'm not filling that sucker up all the way. Uh, for a reason. Not the least of which is, we can only eat so much. Like I said, this is the premise. See, here's again, because of the apartheid laws, um, uh, people of color were not allowed into the restaurant to eat the Indian food. So uh, they were served the food in the bread thusly, uh, and they could eat outside. So uh, that's where the tradition of the uh, bunny chow, of the Durban bunny chow came in. So uh, there's history in with the food. Don't be naive. Uh, this, I'm guessing, is going to be leftovers. Uh, Kelly, hey, thank you for the restream. Um, okay, so now uh, let me move you over. So as you can see, we have the uh, this in here, and the premise is this. It goes on top thusly. Because normally it is eaten with the hands. And uh, so this gets dipped into that. And... Uh, we're gonna figure out how to eat it without our hands. So as strange as this may seem, that is how you eat Durban bunny chow. So right in there. And it, that's what it looks like in the pictures. So uh, let me get a picture of that sucker. Here, How can I get a picture of it? it just like that, I guess. Okay. Now I'll show you a close up in a moment. Uh, an ish. Oh, oh. Like anis. An anish. Uh, I'm trying to. This is so tall that trying to get a picture of it without getting stuff in the background is harder than it sounds. Okay, so, in the crumbs off, it doesn't look like a bunny, no, it's funny bunny chow, so the, like, yeah, I guess like you eat it like a bunny, you know, like this with your hands. Like Purina rabbit chow. Purina rabbit chow. Practical street food, indeed. So, one more time, here we have our Durban bunny chow, with uh, our white bread, with this in there, and there it's in there. So our lamb curry inside. So that, my friends, that is made just like a British hunter sandwich. Oh, well, what do you know? Okay, well, that is night three uh, and the last night of South Africa. <laughs> um, thank you for coming by. 
Uh, remember to follow here on Meerkat. You can follow at cliffyland.com, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Tumblr, on Pinterest, and now on YouTube. Find my YouTube channel, subscribe. We need subscribers. Thank you for the like, Leslie. Um, so the blog will be up tomorrow at cliffyland.com, which will cover all three nights of South Africa. Pictures, links to the original recipes, links to the original these videos that you're watching right here, um, in case there's something you missed. Um, and of course you can see them on YouTube as well. Um, blum, 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 oh yes, information about the country and you know how the food tasted. Uh, next week is a sad country, I'm sorry to say. Uh, I'm hoping the food is good. Tomorrow we do the newest country on the planet is uh, South Sudan. So next week is South Sudan. We'll be doing, I'm guessing two nights. Um, but who knows, it might be three. Thank you for your likes and your retweets and all that good stuff. You guys rock. Uh, catch you guys next time. Um, Hunter Sandwich as well. Mushrooms and be sick. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So catch you next time. Gotta eat this before it gets cold. So thanks for coming by. Bye now.